I'm glad you could come pray with me on this wonderful day. Um, we are continuing to look at the Indispensable Guide to Practically Everything Prayer by Marcia Ford and allowing it to guide these sessions uh, where we seek to learn about prayer, deepen our prayer lives, and take time to pray together. Um, this book started off with some of the big questions around prayer. Uh, we went phrase by phrase through the Lord's Prayer. And now uh, she is presenting to us what she calls the great prayers uh, of um, in history. And so it's interesting that instead of a person, <laughs> this time we're looking at a book. And so the great prayers, I guess, would be those that use this book. Um, and that is the Common Book of Prayer. The Common Book of Prayer, uh, I'll, I'll read you her uh, description. Uh, for nearly four centuries, the Book of Common Prayer has been used for both public and private devotion. Its stately prayers blend Protestant interpretation with Catholic form, with many of its words and phrases becoming part of the language. It was born in 1549. It's been around a while. Uh, revised in 1552, she says, and in 1559, and then again in 1662. Uh, she says, since that time, it has had several major revisions, and uh, I have one of those. Well, I have actually two of those. Um, and so it is, um, it is a wonderful book. I have two. This one um, is a very old one. It uh, has a copyright of 1875. It's so small, I had to get my magnifying glass out to look at it. Uh, 1875. Uh, it was in my grandmother's things, and it belonged to her uh, stepbrother, Edward. Um, his name, at least, is in the, in the back. Um, and it's very, very tiny print. But as I looked at the basic layout of this book, um, it's pretty much the same as the other one that I have, which was a gift to me when I first began ministry. Um, so I... I, I Consider this a prized possession, knowing that my grandmother used this uh, uh, for, for times of prayer. She has uh, little cards and notes and uh, pieces of um, ribbon and uh, pressed leaves in here, which makes it kind of, kind of special for me. Um, but like I said, it's been around a very, very long time. Uh, the Book of Common Prayer is a treasury of majestic prayers for the world, the church, the nation, the social order, the natural order, family and personal life, um, as well as other prayers. And um, in, the, in the back section, there is uh, prayers and thanksgiving, prayers for the world, prayers for the church, uh, for national life, um, natural order, all those things that uh, she mentions there's there as well as uh, general thanksgiving, thanksgiving for the church, thanksgivings for national life, thanksgiving for social order, for natural order, thanksgiving for family and personal life. And so um, it, it also has a, a good many um, um, like service orders, like an order of service. Uh, so a lot of clergy might refer to this, but they're also simple enough that families could use them. And there are some family uh, devotions and uh, little services that could be used. Morning prayers, uh, noontime prayers, evening prayers. Uh, the Psalms are also uh, part of uh, the, the Book of Common Prayer. It is put out by the Episcopal Church. Um, but there are some beautiful, beautiful prayers in here. And I have used this book uh, on many different occasions. Uh, one of the most um, moving times that I have used it as far as um, moving me in my own ministry um, and um, connecting with people are is the section that is uh, when you are to minister to the sick. And there are prayers uh, for when you are laying on hands and anointing folks. Um, anointing with oil, praying over uh, the sick. And um, so that part has really uh, been a gift to me in my ministry and how I have reached out to others. And know that you don't have to be an ordained clergy to pray for the sick. And I'm pretty sure you probably do know that. Um, and so anyone could open this up and use these prayers uh, verbatim or as a guide uh, when you uh, feel called to uh, come and pray over someone who is sick. 
the the prayers are a beautiful and um, and um, a wonderful a way to engage um, in that act of praying for someone who is ill. Um, and, and you don't have to be, in my opinion, ordained clergy uh, to anoint someone or lay hands on someone. Um, the healing comes not by us, but uh, through us by God, right? And so God uses all kinds of people as instruments for ministry in this world. Um, quite often the most broken of us <laughs> get used for ministry in this world. And so don't ever think that you can't be used because absolutely every single one of us can be used. And if you start thinking, oh, you're all that because God have used, used you, I, I like to remind myself that God also spoke through a donkey at one time so that, you know, we don't get thinking we're all that special just because God has spoken through us or used us. Uh, it's an honor for God uh, to use us, of course. Um, but God uses all kinds of people and can use absolutely anyone and does use most of us, I think, uh, at times when we have had no idea that we have been used, uh, that God has worked through us to touch another life or um, a move into relationship with someone else. So, and now I think I'm starting to preach, so sorry about that. Um, but I, I do know too that some folks, and she addresses this, that uh, she says some Christians believe written prayers are lifeless, while others consider them to be unbiblical because Jesus didn't use written prayers. The reality is that the Psalms are the written prayers of the Bible and have served as a lifelong prayer for Jews and Christians for centuries. And every day, all around the world, Christians pray a universal written prayer, the Lord's Prayer, within the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. And so I do know that um, um, having worked with elders and deacons uh, in my time of ministry, that some people prefer to just allow the Spirit to move um, and give them words, and some people like wouldn't dream of trying to do that, that they much prefer uh, to find uh, words that they can use or that can inspire their own words. And uh, so the, the Book of Common Prayer is a, is a great resource for that. I also know from my own experience that there are times when you just can't find your own words. When emotions run deep, um, when you're hurting or sad or grieving, um, where you just can't find the words. And so again, having someone else's words to use uh, that I believe were probably also inspired by the Spirit at some point um, can be a gift in helping you um, in how you are serving or just praying and connecting to God. Sometimes just having those words to help center you and open up your space, uh, your heart space and your spirit uh, to connect with the Holy Spirit um, can be a, a very uh, wonderful gift. And so, as I said, I have this little uh, common book of prayer, and I do mean little. The print is very small. Um, that was uh, among my grandmother's things. And then I have um, this one that is more in the language I am used to. <laughs> There's a lots of these and thous in this one, and so it's not a language I'm particularly comfortable with. Um, but um, they're, they're laid out very much the same. And whether you get the Book of Common Prayer or you go out and uh, search your library or search uh, Google Books or Amazon Books or uh, uh, an um, online thrift bookstore, uh, used bookstore, there are lots of books of prayers. Um, some of them are very uh, pointed in uh, what it, it's, uh, the prayers are focused on. Uh, like prayers for the world or prayers for people or those kinds of things. Uh, some of them are all by one author um, where it's a particular person's prayers. Many of them are compilations of many people's prayers. Uh, I have a book uh, in my office that are some of the prayers of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, there's just all kinds of different books out there. And so as you are uh, learning about prayer and deepening your prayer life, you might want to look into some of those different books uh, and you might be fascinated. In fact, I have a whole shelf uh, in my office that is nothing but books uh, of prayers. Um, and I often bring those out when we have uh, prayer vigils at the church and share those with people as a resource. So there are lots of, of those books out there and there may be one that speaks specifically to you. 
um, a, a particular uh, author, theologian, uh, great prayer <laughs> of history, um, or there may be one that just speaks to you because it's a compilation of so many different people's prayers. And so I'd encourage you to maybe uh, look into those and um, see what you might find. Uh, I was thinking there was something else I was going to show you in here, um, but I think I I talked about everything, the prayers for the sick, the, the uh, prayers and prayers of thanksgiving in the back that covered just about anything you could think of. Like I said, the family devotions, lots, lots of wonderful things in here. And so as we pause this morning to take time for prayer ourselves, uh, you might just uh, ask God uh, for uh, words to connect you. Um, at our church, we do the... Um, one word or my one word where we instead of like making new year's resolutions we seek to choose a word that will be our spiritual focus for the year um mike ashcraft who wrote a book about it said that the the normal and natural direction of life does not lead us towards spiritual transformation we have to be intentional about uh, building our spiritual lives and building ourselves up spiritually and so having this one word uh, as a focus for the year uh, has served me very, very well. Um, I spent my uh, morning devotion this morning uh, starting with my uh, initial list of words that I will narrow down to one word that I will use for the year. This will be my third year to do this, and I have found it really uh, helpful in focusing my uh, devotional time and my spiritual growth. And so uh, if you want to know more about that, uh, if you're not uh, at our church, um, there is um, Mike Ashcraft's book, My One Word, which is very, very helpful in that. There's also some things online. If you just Google My One Word, uh, he has a website there. Um, I don't think it's been updated for quite a while, but the information is still very good and the basics of how you uh, get into um, that discipline, because that's what it is. So you might use this time to just uh, open your heart and mind to God and ask God for a word or a words that uh, God has for you, either words of blessing or words that you might use for direction uh, for this new year. Um, I wanted to continue with uh, some other things that what else she had to say in here. She says, although it is considered a literary masterpiece, the Book of Common Prayer doesn't ignore the ordinary routines of everyday life. Its readers know that after a stressful day, they can take a deep breath, turn to other prayers, and find these words. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and a peace at the last. So that's just a sample of um, the kinds of prayers that are in here. She says, in all the personal prayer selection offers 70 prayers for various situations, celebrations, demographics, and difficulties. In essence, a prayer for nearly every purpose. So as we uh, sit and uh, have our time of prayer uh, today, I will, of course, as usual, begin us with three tones, have music in the background, and end our time with three tones as well. And so during this time, I just encourage you to open your heart space and your, your spirit uh, to whatever God might have for you. May be blessed in this time.
if the exercise of trying to find a word is uh, hard for you, you might start by just listing the letters of the alphabet and ask God to give you a word that starts with each of those uh, letters as just a, a starting place. Um, that'll give you a lot. Um, and then you go back, of course, and you start weaning those down um, as you sit with them, pray over them, uh, look those words up in scripture, look them up in the dictionary, and uh, see where God is calling you, who God is calling you to be, and how God wants to work through that word uh, to move you into a deeper relationship with our God. Thank you again for being here. Again, if you find these uh, sessions at all helpful, I would ask you to like uh, the session and uh, maybe share it with others if you think it might be helpful to another as they seek to uh, deepen their prayer life in connection with God. I am going to close us with a prayer from uh, the Book of Common Prayer. It is the Collect with it, which is a uh, small prayer uh, for the renewal of life, which I thought would be fitting here at the new year. Will you pray with me? O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you again for being here, and may God bless you until we gather again and come pray together.